Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, seems some people are watching. Welcome. I'm very happy that uh, you came back or you just joined. Uh, let me also say hello in the chat. So um, I'd be happy if you were answered in the chat uh, because this uh, has to be, should be an interactive show. Uh, I'm very happy if you're just watching, but uh, I designed this whole concept uh, for inter interaction and uh, not just in the chat, but also uh, with the tools, within the tools that I'm uh, going to deal with here. So hopefully everything is technically all right now. Um, last uh, week I had some problems at the beginning, but I double checked and hopefully uh, you can all hear me and uh, everything is fine. So uh, I also double checked something in the uh, process I want to show today. There's a little glitch, which I don't know really why it is, uh, but it seems to be not on my side because I checked twice in various uh, scenarios. I'm going to tell you later. It's no problem. Uh, the topic for today that I want to introduce is GitLab in a very um, uh, not usual way because I want to uh, show how to collaborate on Office documents. And uh, GitLab is not intended to be used for collaboration with Office documents, as I'm going to show in later episodes. Um, it is uh, used usually for text files. Uh, for example, uh, if you're writing text like literature or scientific texts, but its uh, core feature is that you can collaborate on code. This might be uh, Python code or PHP code or Go language or uh, JavaScript or, well, HTML, which is not code, but uh, which is a usual scenario that you deal with the languages of the web. But um, my point today is, and this is why the episode is called Collaborating on Office Documents. My point today is that you quite often work in teams and want to work in teams where many people are not coders. And as they are not coders, tools like Git and GitLab and GitHub are not their favorite tools. It's possible that they have not even heard about this, but you want them to, to be in your team because you need them, because they are domain experts, they are translators, they are authors, and you need them in your team. And uh, therefore, it's very good to have uh, a clue of how you can exchange Office documents with GitLab, because this brings people on board who perhaps become coders, but perhaps just collaborate with you on the same platform. So this is what I'm going to uh, talk about uh, tonight in the show. And uh, I've prepared something the last time. So let me show you this uh, in the browser. So as you perhaps remember, if you watched the latest episode, the, the, the previous episode, um, I'm uh, Paula Peterson here. Well, this is Paula Peterson. I'm going to show you again in the uh, profile settings. So as you can see, this is Paula Peterson, and uh, she is my avatar for this uh, episode and for the upcoming episodes. And um, I uh, changed the color here to blue because I have another guy. Um, he is, uh, I show you, it's uh, Peter Paulson. Oh, what's that? That's bad, okay. Um, well, this is also what I checked twice or thrice uh, is when I show the, the um, browser window of a private uh, window in Firefox, it sometimes brings up this arrow. So it doesn't matter. I show you. I show you later on. So I have um, another um, avatar here. No, this doesn't work right now. Doesn't matter. Um, I have another avatar. It's uh, the guy that I'm going to collaborate with. So I have Paula and I have Peter. And what I want to show is uh, how they interact on an Office document. So hopefully I can fix this on the fly. I had this problem before. It's also known with uh, open broadcast uh, software uh, to happen with the Chrome browser. Um, well, let's see. Well, this is uh, when you do it live. Um, all right. So just to repeat something from the last time, um, this is the project 
this is uh, perhaps it's a nonsense project. We can change it together if you have suggestions how to how to rename it. Um, but it's called just report. It's a report on animals in the neighborhood. Um, the idea is that everybody knows an animal in the neighborhood and easily can collaborate on this project without uh, thinking too much about the content. So what you can see here is um, the, the, the dashboard page of GitLab. And if I go into this one here, um, you see the details page. And what we saw yesterday, uh, the last week was um, that I created one file. It's called uh, readme.md. It's called .md because it's a markdown file. And um, the convention is that every markdown file that's called readme.md um, is going to be shown uh, by convention on the first page, on this landing page of the project. So if I click here on this uh, link here, I always come to this page. And the readme page should be designed carefully and uh, the content should be well chosen because it is the information page that people see first when you release your project. So take some time and write down what people should know about your project. For example, how they can participate if you want other people in the public space to participate. And uh, this is what you should write down here. So what I'm gonna talk about today is how we can collaborate on Office documents. So, and um, to get started, um, I would have used this uh, button here. And as you can see, we could choose upload file, but um, it happens that nothing works here. And uh, the same as in Chrome and the same as on another instance of uh, GitLab that I um, use at the university but it doesn't work. So obviously this seems to be uh, an error right now. Um, I checked for the JavaScript console, there is no error. I don't know what the thing is. So usually uploading files, not creating them within um, a GitLab would be the easiest way as I show here. But unfortunately it doesn't work right now. Um, which is a pity, but it's not that problematic because there's another way that we can do that. And uh, to do that, we can use the Web IDE. The Web IDE is uh, um, short for Web Integrated Development Environment. So the idea of the GitLab people is um, to build something like an online editor uh, which you can use for uh, doing some stuff in the browser, which is great because it's not a fully uh, equipped editor like um, Eclipse or uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code or Atom or whatever you use or PyCharm or whatever. Um, but it, it um, makes one thing easier that you will see in the next episode uh, when we're going to deal with this in a more complex way. But to come to the point, if I click on Web IDE, I have the chance to um, explore my files. So let me explain the, the interface first. So we're on this, in this project. This is the branch. Um, we come to the concept of branches uh, not much later uh, because they are, um, they are something that we have to deal with today because of convenience for the user. I show you. So we are in the master branch. It was created last week. This is what you see here. And um, we have one file. This is the readme file. It's the same file that you saw before on the page before. So if we could click here, we can say rename or move and we can delete. And these functions here are very well, um, very good to know because uh, you can sort things and um, uh, clean up things in this web ID. So I wouldn't have started today with this web ID if the feature wasn't broken on the page before. But well, it's no problem because uh, now we dive right into it here. So um, let's upload an office file here. So the process would be um, uploading a file here. See, you can create a new file, but not an office document, but you can upload a file here and you create can create a new directory. So what I want to do first is um, create an office document. And um, let's say this is the uh, office document. I called it uh, docs. 
so because it's a report on animals in the neighborhood that's why i call it uh, dogs and uh, what i need here is some kind of uh, blind text i'm gonna get me some from somewhere else and come back here and then i do some formatting here uh, well, that's all for now. So it just has to be some kind of Word document, some kind of Office document. And uh, now I save the whole thing and I go back to our web IDE. So there we are. Now, I want to upload this file. And as you remember, I'm the owner of this project, which is quite important um, as we can see when we get uh, you on board or we get uh, Peter on board who is the second guy to work on this project just to show collaboration in a way. Um, I will tell you uh, in the next uh, step how you can participate on this project. Just wanted to wait with that uh, because perhaps now some more people are on board. Um, let's upload the file. So I go on upload file and I choose it and uh, it's called docs ODT. So um, as you can see, it got uploaded here. Um, you cannot see it in a preview because uh, GitLab is not designed to render all kind of, kinds of files. It renders in the browser PNG and JPEG and PDF documents, but not uh, Office documents because the, the file type is uh, not one that can easily be read by browsers and be shown. So doesn't matter because uh, I told you before that uh, GitLab was not designed to deal with this uh, with these files in the first place. Now we have uploaded the file in some way, but we have not really committed the file to our project. This is a step that I showed last time uh, with the README uh, MD file, and as you can see, save a file um, is called differently in GitLab or in the Git context, it's called committing. That's the reason why this button here says commit. So if I click here, the whole thing slides up and we can see something like a commit message here. So um, this is fine, it's just a dummy, it's called update docs.odt. And the idea of a commit message is to inform other people who are working with you um, what you did and why you did it. So um, this is not an update, this is a new file. So we go like this, we say add um, office doc uh, as an example. So the message in this commit message is what has been done. There has been added a file and I gave a reason well, it's not that important, it's just an example. So um, the rule for co good commit messages is that they start with an English imperative. So um, it's add, change, remove, update, clean, whatever, and then a little phrase that informs others what has been done. Don't describe what happened in the document because if people are interested in what exactly happened, they can open the document or look at other places what, what's going on in the document and what exactly the changes are. But this is fine for now. So, and now we come to this um, radio buttons here. Um, it says uh, commit to master branch, but the default is create a new branch. Now, the idea of these branches is um, that you have at first the master branch. This is like, uh, well, the start of a tree, if you want. So there's a, there's a tree growing and there's only this, this one branch or, well, I, I think it's called the stem afterwards, if it grows bigger. But um, if everybody just committed uh, to the master branch, we would have some problems. For example, if somebody committed the same document called docs.odt on the same branch, on the master branch, might happen that we overwrite each other. So this is the FTP problem. Who saves uh, last wins. So you overwrite by accident 
were versions of other people. This would not happen with Git and GitLab because Git protects you from overwriting changes. Explain, I explain this in detail later, but not with Office documents. But let's look at it from the other side, from another side, which is um, looking at the chances of having different branches. Imagine this tree again. Imagine children climbing up this tree. If there weren't any branches and on the top of this tree, the children would have to sit all together on the same place, on this one branch that exists. But it's fun climbing a tree and sitting in different branches, chatting with each other and just chilling and relaxing on top of the tree on different branches. Now, talking about Git and GitLab, the chance of having different branches is that you can have a branch of your own for certain purposes for throwing apples on people walking by or for just chilling and watching the clouds in the sky. So the idea of having different branches is that you can go into separate rooms and work on your own and then come back with what you did and show the others. Now, and this is the, the basic idea of branches and why they have uh, a lot of potential. Now, so the suggestion here is that we just create a new branch, but um, we will run into problems if we cannot choose, but are forced to do so. So let me keep this simple in the first place and commit to the master branch, which I may do because I'm the owner of the project. And uh, as I'm the only one here, I can do this on my own. So I decide to commit this dialect directly to the master branch. So I commit this and this finally causes a commit, which means saving the document uh, to the repository. We can have a look what happened um, on the page that we saw before. So I turn, turn back to the report, to the landing page. And this is what you can see. So we added with the commit message that you see here 20 seconds ago, this document docs.odt and um, we can see another information somewhere else if we go to the repository um, menu in the navigation and we go to commits in the list of commits we see what happened um, from last week today so this is what happened so if you regularly work on projects or perhaps you work half time and you come back after two days and you want to see what happened the repository commits site is what you can uh, what you can go to and see who did what when and if they gave a good information in the commit message you can see the history of the development of the document for the master branch very clearly so this is the idea of this um, now, let me interrupt at this uh, moment to inform you about one thing that I'd uh, really like to see. If you have the time and you have the courage and you want to join me in this project, um, I will tell you what you can do. So you can go um, on the link on this uh, website. I will post this in the chat. Um, join me in if you want to work to click along. So if you click on this link that I posted in the chat, you will be asked to uh, log in and get gitlab.com, which you have to do. So you have to once register on gitlab.com. If you log in and click on the link again, you will come to this page and there will be, I would have shown this with uh, the Peter avatar, but as it's showing a black picture right now, so I will leave this out at the moment. I'll just explain. You will see a link here that's called request access. And that means that you can ask for uh, permission to work as a member of this project. 
And who is a member of this project can be seen here on settings members. And fortunately, there was one guy who applied for um, access. And of course, I gave access. I don't know if he or she is with us now, but um, the chances that we could really collaborate in real time on this repository. So you're invited, go to this, uh, to this website with your account on gitlab.com and request access and give me a sign in the chat that you did. Then I will look at settings and members and uh, make you join the project. So we, we were going to have more fun if we work on this together, um, because then we have a real life situation. But I go on with this one because I want to show you something that is not um, the usual, usually the case. If you are used to working on uh, Nextcloud or Dropbox, or if you are used to uploading files to an FTP server, then you know that if you upload a file with the same name, you will have the problem that you will overwrite the old version. And there's no coming back to this version except for somebody else has it or there has been a backup at night or something. So you will perhaps cause damage. And the workaround of most of the people I know is to rename the file to doc version one dot odt docs dot version two dot odt whatever so you have a version history on this ftp server that is managed by naming the file and saving um, versions of the file in the same place well this is quite smart if you do it like that but um, it's not a good solution if you have gitlab the second solution that many people have to collaborate on documents is uh, mailing the documents with, uh, with um, uh, increasing numbers of the version. So the same thing, docs version one, docs version two, and they're sending around mails for the people working with them. And people get lots of mails and people perhaps sometimes wonder which is the latest version and they save, they forget to save one version. They're working on version three, but version four was the one everybody's working on. So this will obviously cause problems. Everybody knows that. So, but if you have um, the system like GitLab, you can do something that is quite nice here. So if you go to docs.odt, um, it's not shown in the browser, but you can replace it here with another version. So hopefully this will work. I, I don't think so. I think it, it won't work as the other thing, but I explain how it usually works because I think it's a bug that has to be fixed in the next days. And I will show you what usually is the, the um, easy way to replace um, a file with a new version. So let's say we have this... Um, this LibreOffice uh, document again. And um, somebody adds something uh, like small dogs. And we're gonna get us again some, uh, some lorem ipsum here. Well, let's have this here and uh, let's give it another Headline niveau, no, this is it. So I save it again. And now I want to replace it. Uh, I click on replace. Excuse me. Um, I click on replace. And then I have to click or upload. Oh, now it's working. Why? Okay, good for me. So good for me. It's working. And now I'm going to upload the docs.odt. You don't see that because uh, the software that I'm broadcasting with doesn't show this uh, file selection window, but um, it's uh, what you know if you upload something to the browser, your file system opens and you, you're you going to be asked where uh, where's the document you selected and then you uploaded it. So, and um, I open this up. You see this? This is the candidate for uploading here. And as you can see, um, the suggestion for the commit message is replace docsmt or ODT. Um, little changes just to show the 
difference. And again, and this is important because I'm going to show um, another thing later on, is um, we're, we're committing to the master branch. So, and now we say replace file and then it's uploaded and then it's replaced. Well, that's it. Okay, so you see the commit message here. And as I showed you before, there's another place to get information about uh, what's, what's going on here. So uh, let's go again to the commits. And we see this was my action eight minutes ago, and this was my action right now. So um, the interesting thing is that we can now um, deal with the different versions of the file docs.odt. Now, first of all, there's no version history that is with renaming, like version one, version two and stuff. It's always the same file with the same name. And we have not overwritten the other file version, but we've added a new version here. GitLab is a version tracker, so it tracks the versions of your files. That's what it does. It's um, basically, it's Git that's behind this idea. And as Git on your own is very boring, there are platforms like GitHub and GitLab where you have this version tracking with many people's versions of many files. So um, now I uploaded a different version, but the usual case is that other people upload um, a different version of the file. Um, and this is, uh, this is what we have here. So let's, let's have a look again at this file. So if I click here on docs.odt, you will find the latest commit here. It has this hash. A hash is um, a short string, so this means some characters uh, one after the other that are, in the best case, uh, they don't repeat. So this is a very original signature of a commit and gives us the chance to identify a certain commit with very, very high um, um, uh, probability, proximity. Well, um, I guess you know what I mean. So, and uh, we are interested in the different versions. Now let's click on history here to see the file history. Uh, still loading the browser. And as you can see here, um, this is again the commits and the commit messages for this one file. So, and we see there are different hashes here that I that make this uh, these commits be identifiable by this hash. So, and if I if I go here on browse file or here on browse file, I come back to the version that was uploaded before. So, I click here. And now I go to um, docs.odt which, is, which was authored 11 minutes ago. I go back in the browser to show you uh, what happens when I click on this one here, which was authored three minutes ago. I come to this here. And um, let's compare the file size here before we go on. This is 22 KB. And this is 15.6. And uh, well, it's not a proof, but we can guess that because we added some text, the file size grew. So this is the first indicator for same file name, but different versions. Now, proving that I'm right, that these are two different versions of the same file would mean that I download them and showed you again. You know that I could cheat with that because I, have, I still have um, the Office document open. But let's see if you believe me if I do that. So. Um, I'm going to close this one here. Well, I have to show you, otherwise you think I'm cheating. I've closed this one. It's uh, this dog thing here. And let's go back here and download the old version. So um, this is the old version. Authors authored, let's see, um, 12 minutes ago. And you can download this here. I download this one. And, uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, this is something I have to get better with switching the windows in my broadcasting software. I'm sorry. Um, so now I click on download. 
and um, ask where do I uh, want to put it. Um, you don't see this uh, little window. I save it. And now I'm going to open it up again. Things that you don't see. I haven't forgot to switch the window, but I cannot show this to you. But I'm going to open again the the docs file. Well, it doesn't prove anything here because I cannot show you the whole process. But I invite you to test this out uh, with your own project and with uploading your Office documents yourself. So I switch back because I want to show you some specialties on this collaboration thing. Sorry, but this is the right. Um, now, let's repeat what's going on here. I wonder if this is now working. Um, I have an idea why it didn't work and why it worked because um, I had to check. No, it doesn't work. No, it's really a bug. It doesn't work here, but it works with replace. Well, that's a pity. Now, let me repeat. What's the whole deal with um, uploading and downloading Office documents to collaborate? You invite your folks to, who work with you on the team and tell them upload the files here if it works, in the way that I showed before. So then the files are directly uploaded here. Um, second way, if, if this is buggy or doesn't work, you go to the web IDE. And in the web IDE, you upload the file with this click here. So you choose the file, upload it as I showed before, and then you commit, write a good message, and uh, the file is being uploaded and added to the repository. Now comes the colleague and she wants to replace the file because you're both working on the file. She goes to this document here that has to be replaced, clicks on replace and chooses her new version of the document and uploads it. And what people I think need to learn is that they do not have to give the file a new name and that they don't have to fear that they destroy something because GitLab doesn't overwrite the old file. It replaces the file with the same name with a new version and keeps the old versions. So this is why we call this the version history. And we have a version history for the whole repository. And we have, as we saw before, a version history of every single file. So this is what we saw here. When I go onto this file docs.odt and I click on history here, I have the version history of this file on the master branch. As you will see later, we can have different histories on different branches. That is, imagine the tree again with the children Paula climbed up the tree today in a certain way and just five meters high. And next day she climbed the same branch or another branch, eight meters high, always climbing the same tree, perhaps on different branches. And the history or the stories we can tell about climbing the tree could be different. So this is the version history that we see here. Now, that's the thing with... Uh, uploading and downloading and replacing Office documents. And I have a second scenario that is the collaboration scenario. I, I wanted to do this um, um, uh, synchronously with Paula and Peter, but as the window is black and I don't want to spend so much time fixing that because it takes some time with closing and opening browsers, I skipped that. I will switch to this perspective in a minute. But let me expl explain the potentials of working together on, on Office documents this way. Um, we did some projects, um, colleagues and me, that dealt with Excel sheets. And collecting data on Excel sheets is, somebody, uh, is something that um, really anybody can do. You give them uh, a table with named columns, and it's very easy to collaboratively uh, put data in this Excel sheet. Um, same thing is possible, of course, with Google Spreadsheets, but um, the, the process of working with this spreadsheet is different. 
And as people sometimes don't use Google documents because their research is something that is um, uh, that is uh, that is um, closed by an NDA or um, it doesn't have to be a public all the time, it's good to have a scenario that is with um, LibreOffice Calc or Excel. So we did several projects where different people that were not used to coding, that were not used to the GitLab logic, just up and downloaded Excel sheets and we built an application from these Excel sheets that work with the data they provided. So the idea was, and it worked out quite well, to have some kind of a content management system for data. Um, but nobody had to learn a new backend for this content management system. It was just up and downloading and replacing the files in the way that I showed you before with the Office document. And uh, the whole clue of that is that you have people on board that can really stick to the dom domain knowledge. They, they are not distracted by learning crazy backends and uh, perhaps um, asking you questions about where do I have to click because it's always the same process and the, the main working environment is Microsoft Office or LibreOffice or whatever. So this has, in my experience, a very high potential for collaboration with people who are domain experts and not computer experts. So this is the first thing that uh, I want to say about collaborating on um, Office documents with GitLab. If it stays with the Office documents and you don't want to build something else with them, like uh, you just need some place to share, I would suggest you take Nextcloud or um, own cloud or something like that because um, these are tools that just store the office documents and other documents for sharing and for up and downloading but um, i think it's worth learning exchanging office documents with gitlab if you have an idea for a process that comes afterwards that goes on with the content of the office document in some kind of a pipeline and this is a, a topic for a later episode um, to show what can we do with uploaded Office documents uh, in an automated way. So if somebody uploads an Excel sheet, we can trigger a process that builds some application out of that data that was uploaded with the Excel sheet. And this is really crazy stuff. And still, the people uploading the Excel files do not have to know anything about this pipeline because it's all configured and it runs and runs and runs again whenever they replace the document. So my point is it's worth um, working in GitLab on Office documents if you have an idea what what has to happen with these documents in some kind of pipeline or process that you configure and automate. Well this is up to here the idea of collaborating on Office documents. Now I'd like to add a perspective uh, of a collaborating person. Now what well, this was all Paula with herself and now let's go and see what uh, we can do with um, with uh, Peter. Um, I have to log in and log out I think um, sometimes but um, I don't care it takes it doesn't take a long time. Um, so I log out and take the role of um, Peter Paulson. So I sign out here and um, now I have to log in as another person that I have here. Well, there we go. Okay, there he is. Well, good. Um, he doesn't have any projects at all, but he wants to join uh, the project of Paula Peterson. He knows the URL or he looks for the project. Let's see here if we find her. Of course, I prepared that. We're going to find her. Um, Peterson. So, uh -huh. no projects, but as you can see here is one user. That's her, Paula Peterson. Let's click on here. 
And to make her findable, I changed her profile settings from private to public. Last episode, I showed you how you, how you can make a profile private. The problem is then that you perhaps do not find Paula Peterson on GitLab.com. That's the reason why I changed this back. And we can see her performance over the year here. Uh, this is what she did. Two contribution, contributions last week and two today. So uh, this is why I suggested to make the, uh, pro uh, the profile private, because you perhaps don't want to be benchmarked by the public on your performance. Now, um, this is an example person, so it's OK. And still we're looking for the personal projects of Paula Peterson, and we see here is the report. So we go back to this report and we see here uh, the landing page, but from the perspective of a potential collaborator. Um, I click this, uh, I, I make this uh, go away because uh, we don't need it right now. I told you that we're going to deal with SSH keys later on, so I want, don't want this. And here we find the request access link. So and I, want to, I want to work directly with Paula Peterson. Well, a little excourse, a little one, to the idea of requesting access. The, um, the feature that made GitHub huge was the one that you can fork projects. Forking projects means um, to copy the project of another person into your account to make yourself an owner the owner of the of the copy and then you can do whatever you want and the way of collaborating with forks is something for a later episode i will do something on that because that's the usual way of anonymous decentralized persons collaborating on a project they don't know each other but they want to work together so they fork another one's project and work on their copy and then they pose a merge request or a pull request and collaborate this way. I thought about if I start with that one, but I think it's much too complicated for uh, beginners or people who are just interested in how does GitLab work. So I postponed that for later. And now we have the scenario that somebody has been invited to request access and does that to request access, meaning that if he or she is given access, he or she is part of the same project, of the project of Paula Peterson, which is cool. If you're working with colleagues, do not use the fork idea. Don't make your colleagues fork your project and have copies. This is much too complicated in the beginning, um, especially when you are sitting on the same floor. So make all your colleagues part of your project and give them access and give them roles. So this is what I want to do now. I invited you for uh, collaboration on the project. Peter does that. He requests access. So your request for access has been queued for review. And if you decide uh, you don't want to be part of that, you can withdraw, you, uh, withdraw uh, the request here. Now, um, due to the malfunction of the window, I have to log out again. And I'm going to sign in again as Paula Peterson. Right. And you get a mail that somebody applied for access. And, and of course, you can see this uh, here. But um, sometimes, well, not so often. It happens with my students. Um, I don't notice that somebody has um, applied for access. So um, it's no, you have to be informed by mail, otherwise you don't notice. Now I know this because I did it myself and I go to settings members. And now we can see, uh, oh, there's another person requesting access. That's cool. Um, right. So let's have Peter Paulson given access here and uh, Ronnie given access too. That's cool. So now we are four people and hopefully uh, three real people in this project. So let's go back here. And now we could collaborate here. But let me let me play the role of Peter Paulson. 
So the thing is that I have to log out again and sign in again. Well, this is not so annoying as I thought. It works. So the username is Pats. Now, you see, this is the, the role um, of, this is the uh, repository, sorry, the project of Paula Peterson. And my role in this project is a developer. So it's not that Paula Peterson is a developer, but I'm a developer. This is important because we will see um, not a problem, but um, a topic that we have to deal with because other, otherwise people get annoyed by a certain setting made as a default in a project settings. And I want to show you how to avoid this because it gets people frustrated. Everybody is frustrated by that. So let us, let's avoid this by configuring the project in a different way. But first of all, let's, um, cause, a, um, let's cause a problem by intention. Let's say Peter Paulson wants to upload a document on cats. So um, let's go back to the office suite and uh, build a new document, document, which is called cats. I go back and get me some text here and I paste it. And I do another headline here. So now I save this and it's called cats. Now in the role of Peter Paulson, I want to contribute something because I have a cat in the neighborhood and the cat in the neighborhood has to be described for the report. This is what Peter did and he wants to, con to contribute because he is now a member of the team. So he goes to this place and does what we did before. I checked this last time. I want to upload this file here. No, still doesn't work. So the other way, the web IDE. Peter goes to the web IDE and does what he knows about uploading files. He goes to upload file and selects the file. It is a candidate for a commit and he clicks on commit. But now appears the problem. It's not a problem, but it's something that we can avoid for beginners here. Um, as you can see, he is not allowed to commit to the master branch, which is, I think, a good idea. Because if you imagine that people earn money with um, the master branch, because that's the productive branch. This is the branch the product is being built from later on in a shop or whatever. You don't want everybody to commit to the master branch without control if the quality is right or if this is nonsense what people are contributing. So you protect others um, to be ashamed of the quality that they uh, published. Or let's say you have um, a hierarchy where somebody is the maintainer of the project and he or she wants to control what you contribute. So it's a good idea that not everybody commits, for example, to the master branch. This is a professional scenario. But for collaboration on Office documents, we can smooth this down a little bit. We can cool this down to we are trusting each other because we're working on the same floor. We are learners for GitLab. We want to uh, get used to collaboration and we have social conventions that we talk about when we meet each other. It's not that kind of decentralized scenario where we have never met, but all have to work together and we need quality control. So now I want to show you how to configure this so that Peter is able to commit to the master branch, which is not a problem because as I showed you before, even if he, um, intends to overwrite something by accident or intentionally, he's not able to really kill the old version because it's stored by the version tracker that GitLab is. So if people fear that they can destroy something directly committing to the master branch, they don't have to fear because GitLab doesn't forget anything, which is a bug and a feature at the same time. Um, and uh, 
you can tell people that they can be brave and courageous to just think what's right. Nothing can go wrong because you have old versions. You can go back to old versions. People don't need to hesitate to just commit and collaborate, even if they do it to the master branch. So I want to quit here uh, this process and show you why it is, uh, how it is possible to uh, make everybody commit to the master branch. The scenario, just this uh, as a short um, uh, point at the end, the, the scenario for creating a new branch would mean that Peter needs to um, pose a merge request to Paula so that she unites or merges the contribution of Peter with the master branch. And this is a, a, a job that perhaps Paula, who is new to the whole thing, or somebody who's very busy, doesn't want to do for every change people do. So the attitude towards your colleagues is, um, I trust you, do whatever you think is necessary, because if, you, um, if it is a mista mistake, we can easily fix it. And the attitude is perhaps not, I want to control everything, so please make a branch for every contribution that you make. You decide on that. I just so show you the scenarios and my decision at this moment is that we make everybody directly com contribute to the master branch. So um, I leave this page and show you where you can configure the system, the project, so that everybody can contribute to the master branch. I go back to the landing page. Yes, um, I want to leave the page. And I go to the settings, um, which I cannot do as Peter because he's just a developer. I have to do this as Paula, so I log out again. And I log in as her. Okay, there we go. So let's go to this project and go to the settings. And uh, we do this on the um, repository tab, excuse me, on settings repository. And here we see protected branches, something that you wouldn't guess perhaps, but the branch is, the master branch is protected by default. If we expand this, um, there's some text you can read yourself, but when we scroll down, in the section, we see that the master branch by default is protected so that only maintainers are allowed to merge and allowed to push. Now, we, we were just talking about committing, but that's the same as um, pushing. And uh, only maintainers are allowed. And Peter, he's a developer, so he is not allowed to commit, push or merge to the master branch but I want that that is possible. So we can go here and say that developers and maintainers are allowed to push, which means to commit. I do the same for, ah, okay. I, I um, take this away here. Um, now that's it. Second solution, and I would not suggest that this is, this is a good idea, is make everybody in the team a maintainer, which uh, causes problems on different uh, sides, this is not a good idea. So keep in mind that this is one possibility to have someone being a developer and be um, take away the responsibility from a person. If you give them the role of a maintainer, they have more re responsibility here, which might be good in some cases, but in some perhaps not. Now, don't make the mistake um, to think that this is the safe button for this year. I think this is uh, usability, bad usability, because I, um, I saw that people click on this one, which means they unprotect the branch and everybody can do everything with the branch. So it's, it has already been saved what we did here. So don't do anything. Now, let's see what this causes on the other side when Peter does it. So let's log out again and log in as him. Okay, so same procedure. 
we go to the project page, open up the web IDE, and then upload the CATS file. Now, this is what we saw before, and now let's commit. And as we change this in the settings, as I showed before, we can now commit directly to the master branch. Let's commit this. And now this is possible for everybody, which is nice. So let's see what happens here. So there are other guys uh, with us. We had people to uh, request access. So I invite you again, please uh, add something here. If you have um, a nonsense file about uh, mice or frogs or whatever there is in the neighborhood, um, feel free to contribute here because it's just for training reasons. So um, this is what uh, is should be added. So I tell you again what, uh, what you have to do um, because I want to give others um, some time. Um, if they want to join here. So I log out again and just repeat the settings again. Uh, well, let's go here. So I want to be Paula again. So go to the project. And if you want others to be able to commit directly to the master branch, go to settings and repository and change the settings for the protected branches. By default, it's the master branch who's, uh, which is protected. And if you give others with the role of developers the ability to merge and to push, um, they do not have to post merge requests. They can directly add to the master branch, which is a very relaxed scenario for collaboration on Office documents. Well, um, this is all for now, I think. Um, this was a bunch of things. Um, I will stay here and uh, clean up something. And if you want to ask something in the chat or you want to contribute something, um, I'd be here for some kind of, uh, for some time. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. Hopefully I will be able to do this show every Thursday, looks like that. And if you have any ideas or suggestions um, or questions, uh, you can go uh, on Twitter, uh, see on the, on the bottom of the page now, you can see my um, handle for Twitter. You can ask and give feedback on Twitter. Um, you will find all these episodes that I produce with you together here, you will find them on Vimeo. Also look for the handle on Vimeo. And please join me again next time. Uh, I have to think about what we're going to do, but I want to give you also the chance to decide on the next episode. So what do you think uh, should we explain next time? What should we deal with next time? Do you want to try out something um, in the meantime? to uh, perhaps suggest that we deal with a certain project or a certain scenario. Otherwise, I would invest some time in explaining Markdown within this uh, GitLab um, process. And uh, I did this last time, but um, as Markdown is central to what I work on with GitLab, I produce websites, I produce articles, I produce uh, even books with GitLab. I would like to stress the importance of Markdown, the Markdown language in this whole context, because you can build very cool things with the knowledge of GitLab that you have or that you perhaps gain walking along with me. So I'm looking forward to hearing your suggestions. Um, this uh, is my suggestion for next time. Let's see, I will keep you informed on what's going on. And now I want to see if we have some um, things here that have been added. Is there a new request for access? No, not yet. Okay. Right. Um, cool. Um, well, that's all for now. I'm uh, very happy that you joined and uh, stay healthy 
and I wish you a nice evening. So, see you again.